The core founding principle of this YouTube channel was to help you get more value out of the computers in your life. And what better way to do that than with a collection of free apps. So today I'm gonna to go through 10 of my favorite free or very nearly free apps that I use on my Mac all the time that I think you're gonna love. So let's take a look. So the first app I have to talk about is Alfred. Alfred is an app that basically replaces Spotlight. So instead of using Spotlight with command space, I have Alfred set up to option space and it brings up this nice little interface. I can search for Safari. I can search for uh, Final Cut. I can search for anything and I can just launch that app. Uh, so it's a really nice app launcher, but it does more than that. So if I go into the settings, so I'm gonna hit command comma to do that. I can go into here and see, you can set the hotkey to whatever you want. Uh, I can go ahead and go into features. There's some stuff you can do with clipboard history so you can have it track your clipboard. I'm actually using uh, PasteBot for this, but if you don't wanna pay for a separate app, it'll do that for you. Uh, it does snippets. So if you don't wanna use something like Keyboard Maestro or Text Expander, uh, you can use Alfred to do that as well. So this is all built in. And then they have these workflows, which are super cool. And I only have one set up right now, but it basically lets me search Giphy really quickly. So let me close this out. I'm gonna bring up Alfred and type GIF happy, right? And then I just hit enter and I'm doing a search on Giphy for that term, right? And it can be whatever you want. And I just really like this while I'm working, I'm able to get a GIF very quickly. So I love Alfred, it's free. Uh, the uh, clipboard history, snippets, workflows that I sh just showed are all premium features. So you do have to pay for those. But if you just want a quick app launcher uh, that will work better than Spotlight in many cases, I think Alfred's a great way to go. Now let's use Alfred to launch my next app, Boop. Boop is an amazing app for formatting text, right? And so as someone who deals with code a lot, I come across JSON that's unformatted all the time. And so Boop lets me modify this really quickly, right? So I'm just going to paste in a block of text that I have, right? And I can't read this. Uh, so I'm gonna hit Command B to Boop it. And I'm gonna do Format, and it has a whole bunch of options. I'll choose Format JSON, and boom, there we go. Nicely formatted JSON, perfect. Additionally, uh, let's say I have uh, Fred, Wilma, uh, Dino, and uh, I don't know, Jane, whatever. Uh, so I have a list right here, right? And I wanna alphabetize it. Hit boop, uh, and I can do sort, sort lines, boom. And now it's alphabetized those for me. And then there's a whole bunch more options you can do here. There's a big old list of all these things you can do. So tons of stuff, totally free, open source, great little app. On the other end of the spectrum, in terms of size at least, is Notion. Notion is what I use to manage this YouTube channel, and I use it for other projects as well. Now, I can't really show you everything <laughs> that I'm uh, doing here. Some of these are private projects, uh, but you can kind of get an idea for how I use it for my YouTube channel, where I have uh, some next up ideas that I'm working on. Uh, no idea if these will actually come to pass, but these are things that I've thought about doing videos on. Uh, you can see what I have in production, which is, hey, this one. Uh, I've got all the ones that I've previously done. I've got thumbnails on there and everything. I've got canceled ideas over here. And then on any of these, I can go ahead and like click into this one and I can see what's the video title I used on YouTube, uh, what video number. So I number each of my videos incrementally. So that's the 174th video I've made, uh, the status when I published it, uh, the link to the URL, the thumbnail. I can go ahead and download the original or any whatever I want uh, so I can get access to that really quick. I put show notes down here and it's just a really nice archive of what I've been working on. And Notion also has these views, so I can actually view a calendar and I can see, oh, for the month of January, here's all the videos I posted. And I can go forward and go, let's say, let's go up to July. Uh, so here's today. And then I didn't post a ton in July. <laughs> I've had some other stuff going on. Uh, but yeah, you can totally see what my schedule is. You can see I typically post Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then later in the week, I don't usually do anything. But yeah, uh, I use uh, these boards to really um, just kind of keep track of everything that I'm working on. Um, and again, they're really great for other projects. I've done other uh, videos on how this works. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, quit out of here. But yeah, this is one of the many use cases for Notion. Notion is an absolute rabbit hole. I could dedicate an entire channel to talking about Notion. So let's just move on from here. Okay, so now I'm in Apple Music and I'm just look, looking at an album I'm playing something. And do you remember way back in the Mac OS 10 days? Uh, some people will have nostalgia for this, some people won't. Um, but there was this cool music widget that looked like this and it was 
really of its time and it just it, i just love this thing <laughs> so music widget is a free little app that literally just puts this on your screen uh, you can toggle shuffle repeat uh, i can play pause from here i can change the volume i can skip tracks uh, so all this works very very nicely um, love this little tiny tiny app uh, it's not going to make you more productive you may not even use it a lot but again it's totally free and it's just a fun little bit of nostalgia you can throw on your mac and i think that warrants making it on this list then we have Obsidian, and this is something I've talked about on numerous occasions, and one is, is something that I'm gonna talk about more. <laughs> but Obsidian is, the way I would describe it as kind of a Im imperfect but okay way to explain it is it's kind of like Rome Research, but on your computer and free. Uh, so I really liked Rome Research. I thought it was like the best note-taking app I'd ever used, but I wasn't prepared to pay 15 bucks a month for it. And Obsidian was free, and it is a little different. It does things differently, and big Obsidian fans will tell me how it is different from Rome, um, and that's totally fair. Uh, what I use it for is actually writing things for uh, this channel. So you can see kind of here, I'm going to hit Command-E to preview this, uh, but you can see I'm kind of working on the outline for my watchOS 8 review that I'm going to be releasing later in the fall. I've been using the OS over the summer, over the beta period, and I'm just kind of getting my thoughts together on it. And I just find Obsidian to be a really satisfying way to take notes. Uh, it's definitely a Markdown-oriented editor. You can see it's in Markdown here. I have a custom theme that's kind of like formatting things a little bit. But yeah, it is it is my favorite way to take notes. Uh, there's other people who like Craft, there's other people who like Evernote, there's other people who like Roam, like I said. Um, but for me, this is the app to use. It does have that grid view that people like. Uh, as you can see, I do not use this view. <laughs> Literally every note is a node upon itself. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is what I use to write some YouTube stuff um, because it lets me write in plain text, which is what I need when I'm like posting the description to a YouTube channel. I'll always put that up there. Uh, app switcher, this one might have it, yeah. So I can just like copy this and paste it in. Um, I tried this in Notion, things don't copy as well out of Notion. But anyway, love Obsidian. It's totally free, worth checking out. It's also available on iOS and Android. It does not feel like an iOS app or an Android app at all. It feels like the desktop app on your phone, which is weird, but then you kind of get used to it and I really, really dig it. So uh, really cool stuff with Obsidian. Okay, now we have the one app on this list that is not just totally free or has a free option at least. And that's Pixelmator Pro. It is $40, it's on the Mac App Store. There is a 30 day free trial, but I think this one's worth mentioning because this app is so good and it really replaces, in my opinion, it can replace Photoshop for you. And Photoshop is at least $10 per month or if you're on the Creative Cloud, Cloud plan, it's like 35 to $50 per month. So 40 bucks once to own it for life is really, really great. Um, and so I'm not really gonna go into every single thing you can do here. Uh, there's tons of controls. Uh, there's some color adjustments, so you can do some Lightroom style adjustments in here. There's a three-way uh, color uh, adjuster and everything. There's all this stuff. There's tons of things you can do in here. Like in this way, it's Lightroom replacement-ish. Um, the workflows are a little different, so it doesn't quite work, but you can do uh, like filters and everything. Uh, you can select things, of course. There's this cool, uh, smart selector thing where I can kind of just drag around this object, get that exactly right, cool. Uh, and there we go, I got a pretty good selection. I can zoom in, like maybe I don't want that. Let me get rid of all this stuff. Cool, and now I've got a pretty darn refined uh, mask of just this item. So if I invert the selection, delete that, boom. I've got that there and that is, you know, that's pretty darn good. Uh, and there's tons of features like this with Pixelmator Pro. Uh, super, super powerful what you're able to do here. So I highly, highly endorse this app. If you need a Photoshop style app, but Photoshop is just too much, it's natively made for the Mac, it's super fast. I'm a huge, huge fan of this app. Next up is an app called Rocket. And you know how in Slack you can type like a colon and then joy and then you can see this emoji, or you'll do like colon, uh, ta-da, and you'll get the party popper, right? This is a really great way to enter emoji. Discord does it as well. Some other apps have adopted it, uh, but you can't do it everywhere in the system, and Rocket is an app that makes that possible. Uh, as you can see, I've just been doing this in uh, text edit, uh, and I'm just throwing emojis in here. In my opinion, it's quicker than using the default system picker. I really like it. It remembers which ones you prefer. So if you always type like J and you always go down to Joy, it will remember that uh, so that the next time you type J, Joy is right at the top. So really, really love this app. It's free. There is some premium functionality you can unlock, 
I've never had the need to, I just use the free version myself, and I think it's really fantastic. Then we have Spark, which is an absolutely fantastic email app. Uh, I love, love, love this app. I love it because it's fast. I love it because it's reliable. It makes it so you can sign into one account and it'll bring in all of your accounts across all your devices. So for example, you can see I have four email addresses pulled up here. When I install this app on my iPhone, it'll just ask me for the primary email that I signed up with. I can enter that one and it'll actually pull in all four of my accounts. Now it is doing this by doing some server side stuff so it has access to my emails and everything. For me, that's not a problem if that's a problem for you. If you only want your emails to be between the sender, you and your email provider, then this isn't gonna be the thing for you. But it is so fast, it's so reliable. I really enjoy the user interface uh, across every platform. I think on if you have an iPhone, an iPad, a Mac, uh, an Android device, it works great on all these devices and really works fantastically. I don't wanna poke around too much because this is my actual email, <laughs> but uh, you can kind of get an idea for it here. Uh, and one of the things I really like that I'll call out is if I go into the uh, shortcut section, you can see I can actually set the keyboard shortcuts to match Spark's native ones. I can match the Mail app if I'm used to Apple's Mail app. I can match Gmail, which is what I use. I really like Gmail's web uh, apps shortcuts, and so I use those. Or you can make a totally custom one with whatever you'd like. So uh, this is a really great way to switch over to the app and feel comfortable right away. And again, you can see there's tons of stuff you can do here. Uh, so a very powerful app. They have some Teams functionality that you can unlock with uh, premium membership, but for a free user, I really feel like there's nothing that I'm blocked out of using. Absolutely fantastic service. All right, getting to the end here. The second to last one I have is the Unarchiver, which you've probably heard of, but is definitely an important thing to just be aware of existing. Uh, I've got an archive here, I unzip it, and hey, there it is, <laughs> right? Super, super basic. Uh, but what's really cool about it is if I search for the Unarchiver, uh, you can see it supports tons of formats that the system unarchive or archive utility doesn't support. So there's all sorts of abstract ones that it can deal with. Uh, so I just have it set to unlock or uh, unzip everything. Extraction, there's a couple options. Uh, you can like choose where to extract files to. I always do the same folder as the archive. Uh, you can choose whether to throw the archive in the trash when you're done. So you can see that the archive file that I unzipped is actually in the trash. It's not on my desktop anymore. I like that because I don't really care about the zip after I get rid of it. So it's a really nice, simple app, totally free. There's no paid version at all. So you get all the functionality and it's just an essential app, I think, if you have a Mac. And finally, we have Visual Studio Code, which is, in my opinion, the absolute best code editor on the Mac. I've tried all the other ones. I think there's reasons to like something like Nova from Panic. Uh, but in my opinion, Visual Studio Code is the default. It's the standard. It has everything you could possibly need. It has tons of themes. Um, I can change my color theme. You can see I've got all of these set up and they all look different. If you don't find one that you like, you can go and install however many you'd like. Uh, there's plenty of them out there. Uh, you can go to the extension section over here and search for literally anything. Uh, let's do... Uh, uh, let's do... Monarchy, is that the how you spell it? No, that's not how you spell it. Um, or Darkula. Darkula, right? That's a very popular one. Uh, so we've got the Darkula theme. That's only got 3,000 installs. Uh, these probably aren't it. Is it Dracula? Oh boy, I don't even know. Dracula. Dracula official. Yeah, two and a half million. So I can just install this theme. There we go. And it actually pulls up this so I can do uh, Dracula. And there we go, my theme is set. Super easy there, and then there's tons of things. If you are doing Swift development, you can do uh, some Swift language support, so you can pull that into the app. All of this is hosted on GitHub, really, so it's easy access to get open uh, access to the code for it if you wanna uh, change things, if you're that uh, advanced <laughs> developer. Um, but basically, anything I need, I can find it here, and Visual Studio Code is just absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's crazy it's free <laughs> it's as powerful as it is uh, so i really love that app and with that we've reached the end of my list uh, hopefully you found something in here that you haven't seen before if you did i'd love to hear it in the comments hit, hit the like button do all those things and i will see you here next time thank you so much for watching Bye bye